I'm overly loud, kind of obnoxious, and I have a strip club announcer voice. That's why yeah. you all kind of heard me before. You're like, yeah, I know that's, why that's, keep all. Around. that's why you keep me around. So with further ado, for your viewing pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames and messieurs, please welcome to the stage, Jason Harris. <laughs> that's an intro. Hey guys, I want to start off by thanking everyone for coming out. Um, you know, th we've had so much fun doing these events. This is our 10th one. Yes, we've, we're up to number 10 now. Um, this started off uh, that we were just going to do this for a handful of dealers, and it just continued to grow and continue to grow. And the fact that you guys are here showing that you have that thirst, you know. So everybody that get the email and they didn't show up, sorry, you're not thirsty. You can just turn off the live feed now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so guys, here's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Um, a little bit about myself, but hey, JP did such a good job, I don't think I really need to go into it. Thank you. So um, what I want to talk to you guys about today, I know it's going to seem a little 101, but I actually feel like I have to kick it old school and go back to school with a bunch of people just because of what I've been seeing going on in the industry right now. So you know what I've been seeing going on in the industry right now um, is a lot of reactiveness in our marketing efforts. Uh, a lot of money is getting spent currently into the system, and the way the money is being spent and the creative that's coming out is just really kind of subpar. In fact, actually, I think over the last couple of years as an industry, we've gotten better and better and better with our marketing efforts, but just in the last six months, it's like we forgot everything that we learned in the last four or five years and just went right back to a bunch of old school stuff. So guys, what I want to review with you today is ad types. Because as it sits today, we've never had so many different types of ad types or ad formats at our disposal. So that's really cool. Audience targeting. This is, you know, it is digital marketing. One of the biggest advantages of digital marketing is that it is a laser, not a shotgun. And unfortunately, I still feel that there's a lot of efforts out there right now in the market that are still this shotgun approach. And lastly, I want to talk about creative strategies. Because it's one thing that is just kind of being left to the very last you know, of our marketing efforts, and the customer is the one that's really feeling the hurt on that, and we're not seeing the results that we should be seeing out of our uh, spend, uh, of our uh, ad dollars. So to get into it, guys, today I'm going to talk about ad types. I'm going to talk about video. I'm going to talk about HTML5, okay? I'm going to talk about Messenger. I'm still talking about carousel ads. I'm kind of surprised. It's actually probably the oldest ad type on this list. But hey, we're still talking about it. Instant experience, not to be confused with Instagram, but it is a Facebook product. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Story ads, um, I don't know about you guys right now, but for a lot of dealerships, you know, if you're doing it right and creating the right creative, targeting the right audience, people are crushing it right now with story ads. And dynamic ads, again, it just seems like we kind of set the go button on our dynamic ads and then forgot to actually make adjustments or do optimizations to it. So we're gonna go over some ad types, guys. Big delay, there we go. No, no, it's jumping on me now. This always happens to me. I think it doesn't like me. Oh, is that what it is? No. It should be working now. It should be working now. Okay. No, I'll do that though real quick. Everybody sit there and wait until something played. 20% <laughs> of people will read the text on a page, but 80% of people will watch a video. If you guys were, if you guys were reading this text down below, you're actually in the minority. <laughs> See, you thought I was just kind of messing around, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Four times as many customers would rather watch a video of a product than read about it, all right? Almost 50% of internet users look for a video related to a product or service. If you guys are not doing video, you're missing out in a huge way. A video is not, um, a video accounts for 65% of all internet traffic. Think about that, guys. 65% of all internet traffic right now is video. That's insane. That's how much video we're consuming. I think I heard at one point in time that we consume on a daily basis more video than that was produced between the 30s all the way up to the 70s. 
in a single day. All the video that was produced in that time frame, we now, we now actually consume on a daily basis, all right? 64% of viewers are more likely to make an online purchase, all right, including if the, if the video is included in their landing page, okay? So we're not, we're not only engaging with the customer and sharing our message, we're also increasing our conversion rate through video, okay? Every single landing page needs to have a video. I was in a dealership the other day, and um, everyone's complaining about leads right now. I'm not getting enough leads. There's not enough leads. Somehow, like we talked about this earlier, like leads is going to fix <laughs> your problem of selling cars. You know, we know that's a lot more than that. But when we go to take a look at the website and see these lead, quote unquote, lead engagement forms, has anybody filled out like a test drive form or a product form at any point in time in the last couple of years? And why should you? There's no value proposition for you as a consumer to do so. Video can actually be a huge part of that. If you guys have a test drive form or any type of engagement form on your website, putting a video right above that, explain to the customer the value of to them in filling out that form and what's gonna happen actually if they fill out that form, your conversion rate's gonna go through the roof, right? Consumers want to watch, they don't want to be told, okay? So you gotta show them, not necessarily tell them. Your content has to be well done. An engaging, well-produced video can be a start to a long-term customer relationship. You'd be amazed how many phone calls, guys, I get from my LinkedIn connections or my Instagram connections or my Facebook connections, and they answer the phone like, hey, Jay, you got a second? Can we talk? In fact, I just got one yesterday. I'm like, yes. Who is this? <laughs> They're like, oh, this is a, you know, so, so, so at the dealership. I'm watching your stuff for a long time. I just got a quick question, All right? They felt that comfortable to start the conversation that way because they've engaged with me so many times. They've been watching my content for so long that they felt that close to me that they could just pick up the phone and just say, I got a quick question. Can you help me with it? Okay, Engage, engaging with that customer. Your goal should be to entertain and to educate. You got to bring both to your video. If you're just doing one or the other, the value proposition for them to continue to watch those videos just continue to go down, down, and down. Sixty percent engagement of a video ad increases purchase intent by ninety-seven percent. So we're looking to put a video out there in the form of an ad. If we can achieve a sixty percent engagement rate, we see a ninety-seven percent increase. All right, and the intent to submit the form, make a phone call, or just simply walk into the dealership. We want to evoke emotion in our marketing efforts. Now, how do you evoke an emotion in your marketing efforts if you're just putting out a single image? How can you evoke emotion just through black and white text? We can't, right? Through video, I can evoke an emotion. I can make you laugh, I can piss you off, or I can maybe even pull at your heartstrings a little bit. If I can evoke an emotion with you through a video, from, through, through a video, your probability of retaining that message and remembering who I am is 4,000 times higher than if it was just a single image or black and white text. If I sat here, guys, and asked you what were the last five text ads you saw, the probability is you wouldn't remember a single one of them, okay? If I asked you what was the last five maybe image ads you saw, you might be able to recall one or two, okay? But if I sit here and ask you what were the last five videos you, you, you watched, it might take you a few minutes, but you'd actually be able to recall all five. And for the reason for that is those videos more than likely evoked some type of emotion. Now we can do that in as simple as five to 10 seconds. Actually, so much so, Facebook and Instagram is now optimizing for three seconds. I think it's a little crazy. <laughs> Three seconds still doesn't seem long enough for me, but the studies have showed that three seconds of video is enough time for the brain to acknowledge the message and to recall, and to recall that brand if they've experienced that brand once before, okay? So if you are targeting existing customers, three to five seconds sometimes is all it can take, all right? If you're targeting new customers, I really recommend 10 to 30 seconds because they need to hear your story, need to hear your voice until you start hitting those smaller, those smaller videos. Any questions on video real quick? 
Anybody out there doing video right now in their advertising efforts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a we got a walking billboard of, of what video can do to your brand. And if you guys yeah, shoot. I think you always got to do a little bit of both. You know, um, I think with every video you put out there, there needs to be some type of entertainment value to it. There also needs to be some type of educational element to it as well, right? You, your, the value proposition of that video increases when one side of my brain is entertained while the other side of my brain learns something, okay? Actually, our brains work, there's two different spots for that, right? The way that we, um, ad, the way we process data and information is on one side of our brain. The, way, the place that we store, all right, things that make us laugh or things that make us sad or, or things that may get us angry, we store that on another side of the brain. Okay? So if you guys can evoke both emotions, or you guys do both, you can educate and entertain, the probability of them retaining that message is incredibly higher. Any other questions on video before I move forward? HTML5. Who in, who in the room has heard of HTML5? Okay, good, a few people have. I know, you know what, this is not new. HTML5 has been around for almost 10 years, okay? But I still am not seeing it in our day-to-day -day marketing efforts. <laughs> and to explain a little bit about HTML5, I've got a short video. Chatter on the internet these days, especially geeky chatter, you may have heard the term HTML5. Well, what is that? HTML stands for, uh, forget it. But it's the <laughs> behind-the-scenes coding language that makes us able to see stuff online. Since the original HTML was invented with the web over 20 years ago, it has gone through many updates, but it's been more than a decade since the last one, and in web terms, that's pretty much forever. I mean, like 10 years ago, we all still loved our digital watches. Oh, wow, the calculator. <laughs> so HTML has been a few steps behind changes on the web for quite some time. For example, when video came along, there was no way to integrate it naturally into HTML, so different companies developed their own video players to work around it. These worked okay, but they were all external plugins, meaning that you had to download them. And this was, well, annoying and potentially risky. HTML5 is adding capabilities to deal with this stuff, like video, right into its code, so that plugins hopefully won't be necessary. And there's plans to add a bunch more cool stuff that previously was tricky or even impossible to implement with HTML alone. The overall hope is that someday it will create a standard, consistent web experience across all devices and browsers. HTML5 is still being developed, and as of early 2012, isn't 100% finalized, but the browsers are starting to implement some of its features, and together they are working hard to get HTML5 fully ready for, uh, someday in the future. <laughs> so it's 2019, guys, and we're still working through HTML5. All right, now a lot of companies out there have made it easier. You don't necessarily need a coding background to do it. There are some great apps out there that will allow you to design creative in HTML5. What HTML5 ads allow you to do is to bring a, le a level of uh, animation to your ad, and you can add video to your ad. You can now uh, add text bots to your ad. There's a lot more that you can do with that to engage with the customer at the point of the actual ad piece. Before, it's always been, hey, here's my ad. Click on it. Let me take you to a landing page. All right? Now we can actually engage directly with the customer right at that moment when they're consuming the piece with HTML, HTML5 ads, guys. Does everyone remember Flash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This was a big problem. Come on. You remember Flash? Oh, you remember Flash? <laughs> All right. HTML5 is what really replaced Flash. Okay. It came in as kind of a universal code so that everybody can use it, no matter what operating system, no matter what device. Your creative will look consistently the same. You'd be amazed how many display ads I still see out there, single image display ads that are not fitted properly or don't size properly for a mobile device versus a tablet versus a desktop. I know it's crazy, it's 2019, I'm still talking about this shit, but I'm talking about it because there are still a lot of people out there that are doing old crap. So this is why I'm talking about it, guys. If it sounds a little boring, this is why I need to bring it up, okay? Tradi uh, traditionally, um, HTML5 required a developer, but now there's some amazing third-party apps out there that allow you to design some very cool creative right from your cell phone or your desktop. So HTML5 should not be a scary thing for you, all right? It's something that you should embrace. Literally about 30 minutes of research will show you how to develop out an HTML5 ad. Once you've done it, you'll never go back to a standard uh, traditional display ad. 
Any questions on HTML5 ads? No? Okay, cool. All right, carousel ads. Carousel ads is the oldest format in here, but it is still crushing it. Still amazed how many single image display ads that I'm seeing out there. Carousel ads gives the opportunity to introduce multiple images, multiple pictures, um, multiple videos, multiple messages, and the string of them together can tell the story. Giving the, giving the client the opportunity to kind of swipe through and telling that story. Just don't put random pictures together, okay? When you're thinking of putting this creative together, you're starting with one picture, you're telling a story through pictures or through short videos in your carousel ads. They are 10 times more effective than just a single image ad. Yes? You can have one video, one image, or all images? You can do it all. Yes, you can do one video, uh, you can do one video, you can do multiple images and end with a video which is actually really cool too, because you can do a nice little quick little intro piece, go through a couple different slides, and then finish it at kind of your call to action. All right, Carousels is still probably the most commonly used ad format on Facebook and Instagram. And like I said, it's still the, older, the oldest of the formats, but it's still crushing it, and I, I'm not seeing it done effectively. You can see here, this creative piece here, you can see how the story kind of continues to go, talking about the features of the vehicle with that call to action to continue to learn more. Messenger ads. Anybody doing messenger ads right now? Okay. I'm amazed how this just kind of slipped just through the cracks. Messenger ads were launched well over a year ago, and um, they're still not heavily adopted with our industry. And I'm not 100% sure why, because it's instant communication to your potential customer. They get to consume your creative and ask you a question right there on the frickin' spot, with natively within the app. If you guys are not running Messenger ads, again, you're, mo you're missing out on a huge opportunity here. The, uh, the amazing thing with Messenger 2 is, and I love that Facebook doing this, is that it crosses multiple platforms, right? I can start my conversation on this device, I can have an additional conversation on that device, and I can continue to bounce through it. So, I mean, look, we're, we're not selling $13 widgets, right? We're selling 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollar cars. Right? That's not going to be done in just a single conversation. But with Messenger, that conversation stays with the consumer no matter what device they go to. As long as they're logged into it, they can continue to have that conversation with you. So Messenger ads, huge opportunity, guys. Any questions on Messenger ads? I know I'm, I'm going to run through this a little quick because it's getting towards the tail end. Any questions? No? OK, cool. Instant experience ads. Another one, guys. This almost ranks right up there with me with like video. Okay, if you're not doing instant experience ads, again, you're missing huge opportunities right here. You gotta think of each one of these ad formats as like a sandbox, okay? And as more people play in that sandbox, the cost to play continues to go up. All right. Uh, HTML5 ads are still pretty low cost, even though they've been around for a long time. Not a lot of people are playing in that sandbox. Video ads are still stupid cheap because again not many people play in that that sandbox the average cost of a video view right now uh, for a 30 second video is between three to five cents and sometimes I've seen it even cheaper I and mean, that's crazy to put something that engages with the customer all right and creates engagement and develops out awareness starts to make the brand more prominent for three to five cents okay so here's what instant experience is anybody familiar with this at all by the way Oh, okay, cool. I like that. <laughs> All right. And it's, it's the uh, instant experience ad is kind of like the one, two, three punch of ads. All right. In the past, you always had a one, two. You show the ad, click here to take you to the landing page. That's what it was. Always has been that case. Well, Facebook and Instagram go, well, that's kind of a shitty experience. Let's see what we can do to change that. So they created the instant experience. The instant experience allows you to consume the ad click to expand the ad and opens up a little microsite within the app. Right? That microsite um, loads 15 times faster than any landing page. So that one to two happens super, super fast. Right? With inside that little microsite, they didn't have to leave their app, nothing else opened up, they get to consume more information on it. So they see the app go, yeah, okay, that's kind of interesting. Let me, let, let me dive into that a little bit more. They can dive into that. You can see from the example that I have back here, in that micro site, you can include images, you can include videos, and you can include call to actions to take 
the next step, which could be taking them to your full landing page or asking them to schedule the test drive or set up a service appointment or so on and so forth. Um, oh, lead generation is a great opportunity with instant experience as well. You know, we're going to find, you're going to find much higher quality leads come from an instant experience. Is anybody running lead ads right now? Okay, lead, lead ads came out uh, almost a couple years ago, okay? And, you know, first probably 12 months they were out, everyone was really crushing it on lead ads. Now what we found is the quality of the lead ad has just kind of disintegrated over time. They're just not that great. Now what Instant Experience does, it almost kind of pre-qualifies the person. So instead of just having the, here's the creative, go straight to a lead ad, it's here's the creative, here's the longer form of that creative with more information. Now the call to action is going into a lead ad. So we're seeing much better conversion here. And again, a lot less expensive because it's a sandbox that nobody's playing in right now. Story ads. Anybody run story ads right now? Mmm, loving me some story ads right now. Seriously, guys. Um, look, uh, every once in a while, a new ad format will come out and um, it won't work. In fact, actually, Facebook and Instagram and Google, they're actually kind of quiet when they introduce new ad formats. It's like they just kind of put them out there, but they don't necessarily tell anybody. They're just going to kind of see how the market's going to react to it. In some cases, they'll actually just put an ad format out there, go, oh, that kind of sucked, and they actually just pull it right back and not even tell you. So story ads came out a mm, little bit over nine months ago. And originally, story, uh, story ads, you had to have at least 10,000 followers on your Instagram account to actually put in a story ad. So that's how they kind of tested it to see if it was a viable product. Well, a lot of people don't realize that it worked really well for them. And about six months ago, now they actually allowed us to purchase that story ad space with not having to have 10,000 followers to get into it, okay? Um, any big Instagram users here? You guys, Instagram? Okay. Everyone understands what the story ad is? What a story is? Okay. So placing these story ads, that, again, it's a, it's a sandbox not a lot of people are playing in. Your cost of play in that space is very low, but they're rewarding the people that are playing in story ads by giving up some what I consider some really top dollar real estate for a very low cost. But again, this is not going to last long. So jump into story ads, squeeze you can, get what you can out of it, and then bounce out when it gets too expensive. So I'll show you real quick what kind of a story ad, and really what it is, it's a teaser piece, right? Like, look how cool this is. You know, we, we want to get them to engage with us. You don't have a lot of time with a story ad. You really don't, okay? You got about 10 seconds with a story ad. So whatever you're putting in there needs to be fun and engaging, and it really needs to be like, hey, do you want to see the rest? <laughs> Follow me, you know? Swipe up to see the rest. Um, Short page stories are okay. We're good. We're, we're over that. Okay, swipe up options. We got a couple different swipe up options. So they swipe up. We can take them to a landing page. We can get them to fill out a form. We can have them do a spin to win type contest with natively within the app. Uh, we can actually ask them to follow us. We can ask them to create an account. There are great call to actions with story ads. Again, also the story ad. It's a measurable element because it's a 10 second video. So um, again, we'll talk about this a little bit when we go farther into audiences, but just right now, why do I harp so much on the video? Not necessarily just the low cost of the video engagement, but it's the measurable engagement that we get with video that we don't get with anything else, okay? I know exactly how many people have watched 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100% of whatever video I put out there. And based on that, I can re-engage with them with another video, and then another video and then maybe come in for that call to action. So we use video in, in a huge way as kind of a filtration process. So you know, the average cost per click right now is like almost three bucks. It's in, that's insane that we're paying that much. I mean, I remember when I was paying like 15 cents. So I've been Google Ads for a long time. It's amazing that we're still using the exact same strategy now as I was 15 years ago. It's kind of crazy, but still, whatever. Um, we use that video as a filter. Okay, present that video to a larger audience. Whoever engages with that video can then move into a smaller filtered audience. You now re-engage with that filtered audience, a higher call to action. Your cost of engagement is a lot lower. Your engagement is much higher, and you use video to filter who actually gives a crap about your message or not. Okay, 
So instead of hitting up everybody, you guys got to think of ads now as not a singular piece. We've always thought of one ad, ads out there as like, hey, I put my ad out there, then they give me a call. Not so much anymore, okay? Your ad strategies need to be a path of engagement, okay? So you got the intention, the, you got the attention, they engage with you, now what do you do with them, okay? You got their attention then, they engage with you again, great. Now what do you do with them? Always multiple layers of engagement. It's never one singular ad that's ever gonna do the trick anymore. Plus, if you continue to play that one singular ad game, you're gonna pay stupid prices for it. Any questions about story ads before I move on? Okay, cool. Dynamic ads. Um, I'm gonna go through dynamic ads real quick. Is everybody familiar with dynamic ads? Okay, here's the thing I see with dynamic ads. It's not a set it and forget it, okay? You guys need to consistently check your dynamic ads. You'll be blown away how many times my team will find a dynamic ad running where the inventory feed or the product catalog feed expired like a month ago and there's no images in it. And they'll just say images coming soon, okay? So when it comes to dynamic, dynamic inventory or dynamic ads, you just need to stay on top of that. That's the biggest thing I can give you. Okay, I wanna get into um, audience targeting. Because again, this is something we, just do, we do not spend enough time on and it's so insanely important. Audience targeting. You guys need to, there's three parts of the audience targeting and I'm gonna go through this a little quick. You got demographic, you got behavior, and you got interest, okay? Before you run any ad whatsoever, any ad whatsoever, you need to answer these three things, okay? You can't just go with one, you gotta go with all three. You gotta know who your demographic is. Who are you targeting with this piece of creative? Are you tar targeting um, young single males? Are you targeting um, executive retirees? Are you targeting s large families? All right, you need to know who your demographic is. Language, age, gender, education level, household income, parental status, religion, geographic location. You need to answer as many of these as humanly possible. Okay, again, not a shotgun approach, very laser approach. Once you have the demographic, now we need to decide their behavior. There are two ways to detect behavior. That is through keywords. What do I actually type into my search? By the way, guys, you'd be amazed how many accounts I get into right now and I'm still seeing like bidding for like single words, like Camry, <laughs> F-150, <laughs> okay. Over four plus words are used on average in a Google search. Four plus words. If you guys are bidding on one to two word phrases, your cost is gonna be astronomically high, all right? If you're gonna to continue to bid with keywords, you need to make sure what you're actually bidding on are key phrases, not keywords. In fact, I would love if they actually replace that word with keywords and key phrases, okay? Well, know everyone, the most commonly used key phrase right now in searches, near me. Okay, almost everything is near me. A pizza place near me. A Hyundai dealership near me. All right, near me is the most commonly used out there. All right, in market. Okay, in market is a big one. Both Facebook, Instagram, and, and Google have spent a stupid amount of time developing out algorithms to develop out behaviors, okay? So if you're shopping online for a new or used car, they know, they know all the pages you visited. They know what you've done. Okay, so they put in actual in-marketed efforts. So they can break it down into three different categories. New or used, all right, brand, or all the way down to vehicle type. You can actually choose all three if you want. You can choose one, you can choose two, or you can go all the way down to the vehicle itself. Any questions about behavior before I move on? Yes, does that go for it. on Google Analytics? Do you still get the ability to target like, in-market automotive shoppers? I think and like Facebook and Instagram, yes. And they, Facebook and Instagram just introduced a uh, brand as well. Really? Before it used to be just vehicle type, newer used. Now they've gone as, as far as even, actually they've actually introduced the specific vehicle, not every single manufacturer, but all the way down to the specific vehicle. So like you go on there right now, you can actually target in interest Nissan Rogue. <laughs> not for every car, but they are slowly putting those things out. Here's the shitty part with Facebook and Instagram. They're never gonna tell you this. <laughs> they don't send a newsletter out and say, hey guys, guess what we just did? We included all these new in-market audiences. You're gonna have to kind of check it from time to time to see what's new and what's available. Interest, okay? 
Every target audience has a specific interest, all right? We've identified the demographic. We've identified the behavior. Now we have to identify the interest, all right? My interests, uh, dogs, camping, hiking. Those are some of my interests. I like ATVing. I like spending my time outdoors, all right? That's one of my biggest interests. I'm a parent between the ages of 30 and 45, okay? I have three kids at home, and I'm in market for an SUV. Boom, boom, boom. All of these things have to be identified, interest, demographic, and in market, either behavior and key phrases, not words, key phrases, all right, before you can ever start making creative. Once you got those things identified, now we can start talking about creative strategies. So now I know who I'm actually going to create the creative for. Who I'm going to make the creative for. I'm not making the creative for my dealership. I'm not making the creative for my manufacturer. I'm making the creative for my audience. Okay. We fit a lot of life into our Subaru Forester. A lot of everything. Over all the years, we trusted it to carry and protect the things that were most important to us. We had no idea what we were doing. Our Forester helped us build a life. We moved across three states. Just lost kids in the box. Remember this? <laughs> Come on, babe. Even way back then, we always knew we had a lot of life ahead of us. <laughs> That's why we chose a car we knew would be there for us through it all. Welcome to the all new 2019 Subaru Forester. <laughs> the longest lasting, most trusted Forester ever. It's a good piece, right? Yeah, right. Do you, think, do, you th do you think they knew who their audience was? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, they did. Now, Brent did this amazing uh, presentation. Brent, how long ago was that? Uh, Dudes and Donuts, when was that? Dudes and Donuts? Yeah, Scion's big fuck up when it comes to <laughs> understanding your audience. Oh, uh, Millennials Dude, well, how, that was a while. Yeah, okay. So Brent did this amazing presentation. In fact, maybe we'll try to find it because I actually think I saw it online at one point in time and posted it for you guys. Okay, but uh, Scion, <laughs> as we know, doesn't exist anymore, okay? Scion clearly did not understand or at least want to embrace who their audience was, all right? Scion was selling cars to males, you know, around the age of 40, but they thought, you know, the car was designed for people in their 20s. So their marketing efforts continued and continued and continued to be for people in their 20s, yet the fucking data showed, all right, that it was people, that men in their 40s were the ones buying these cars, all right? They did this one video, and we'll have, I'll send it to you guys all. It's literally called Dudes and Donuts, all right? It is these big, you know, Jersey Shore meatheads in a Scion TC. They're doing donuts in a parking lot, drinking milk and eating donuts. That was an ad campaign, and it would, they made several pieces of this. This was a pretty big ad campaign for them. So you got to understand, this is some great creative, guys. Look, they built off this. They know who their audience is, okay? Once you sit in a Subaru, you'll stay, okay? Uh, you can't see it here, but confidence in motion, <laughs> okay? Um, they, they knew who their audience is, and they continue to make creative specifically for their audience. All right, guys, this is my last one, and then I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, Facebook ads versus boosted post all right how many people are boosting posts right now no one wants to raise their hand because you know what i'm gonna tell you to do <laughs> okay fucking stop <laughs> okay stop boosting posts all right boosted posts are literally three steps away from just a full-blown ad okay a boosted post is not going to give you audience retargeting options okay it is literally let me just boost the post and then it's done and it's gone Okay? You're not going to get as many audience targeting options. So you get some demographic options, but you're not going to get interest in in-market options. Okay? So the creative's already there. <laughs> the creative's already there. You guys just need to take it one step farther. Okay? The whole point with all this creative is that we present you with one piece of creative. We got your attention. You engage with us. Now we want to take you down that path. You cannot do that with a boosted post. But the only thing you do with a boosted post is just make some giant awareness of your product or service. But even then, I kind of struggle with that because then, you, again, you created the awareness, you got the attention, but then what the hell do you do with it after that? Any questions about boosted posts versus uh, Facebook ads? Just stop doing them, run an ad, make everybody happier. Okay, cool. All 
had a bunch of cool slides pretty much explaining exactly what that was. The key takeaway was pretty much just don't do it. <laughs> All right, guys, last thing I want to show you is um, August 12th in Detroit, Michigan. It's only a five hour drive. All right, me and Brent are going to go do it together. <laughs> All right, is the Rockstar Automotive Conference. All right, this is an amazing automotive conference. I don't know how the hell these guys do it, but they actually do it at no charge whatsoever um, to the dealership. There are amazing keynote speakers. Brent will be there. I, I will be there. Not like you guys want to see us again. But anyways, um, there'll be some just amazing guys there. I really encourage you guys to check it out. There's a piece of paper on your desk for uh, to take a look at that. And best video ever. Yes. Yes. Let me, let me just play the. Now, this is actually an older video. You'll see in there it actually showed $395. Um, but the old video was so good, I had to show it. It was awesome. Uh, it's totally free to dealers. Guys, check it out. It's Rockstar Auto Rockstar Conference. Auto. Yes, OK, the URL is there. Good, you guys got the information. Hey, thank you guys so much. <laughs>